Right then, welcome to five things that we learned watching Manchester United against Real Sociedad last night. In number one, weak links. Fred, Maguire, Lindelof, Casemiro, Alanga, Ronaldo. They were all poor. You can have a good game. You can win a match with seven or eight players playing well. You can have three or four passengers sometimes in a game and get a result. But you can't have six underperforming players and pull the result out of the bag. It doesn't work like that. The fringe players, the non-first choice players in their position, um, have demonstrated a massive dip in quality from the first 11 that we've been seeing. Fred was poor. We look shaky when Maguire plays, uh, both playing out in possession and uh, also defensively. It was a woeful display from half a dozen players tonight. Number two, Ronaldo ruins. He actually starting to look his age. Whether that's sharpness or whatever, but age is something that I'm thinking. He looks demotivated. He doesn't seem to follow the instructions. He doesn't seem to be pressing off the ball. I think the reason that they brought Fred in to play as a 10 was to sort of do his pressing for him. He is dropping deep to receive, but not to link. Does that make sense? He doesn't move for the ball unless it gets into the box. When it, when the ball's in the box, Ronaldo comes alive and Ronaldo looks like he might be a threat. And an asset that we might be able to utilise is Ronaldo getting on the end of some crosses that people put into the box because he is a definite threat in those situations. But he doesn't hold the ball up. He doesn't run in behind. He doesn't link play outside of the box on the halfway line as we're building play up, becoming an asset there. He's very static. That leads to a lack of movement across the entire forward three because he's not willing to interchange with anybody else. And that means that we look worse playing out. Now, Maguire being back in the team, uh, Fred being back in the team, those could be a couple of factors which also compound the fact that there's no movement in the forward line. But it wasn't good. Number three. VAR nightmare. It was a bullshit decision. It was just it. It wasn't a bad call. It wasn't a um, could have gone either way. It was just plain wrong. I've had people in the comments from the video from last night telling me that oh, it's the exact same thing with the reason why we got the penalty against PSG. No, it's not. The rules changed August twenty twenty one. The handball rule was updated to say that if the ball comes off any part of your body prior to hitting your hands, not a handball. How can you be expected to know when there's a ricochet? Even if it comes off somebody else that's close to you and hits your hand, it's not a handball. The rules are forever being updated. The current rule set, that's not handball. The fact that the referee gave it and then the, the very tool which is there to, to check up on him making massive clangers like this looks at it and goes, yeah, that's sound. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I... I I'm almost lost for words on what you do in that situation when people review it and go, nah, sound that. Number four, Ericsson's everything. He was certainly against social the only midfield that I could pass forward and he was doing so with some serious finesse. He sees the entire picture. He knows where everybody is on the pitch. He releases the ball with precision with speed he's arguably United's best player at the moment it's probably between him and Martinez I thought Martinez was sensational when he came on everything he does is with urgency everything he does is with quality obviously unfortunate to have the handball called against him um, but he's he's just he, he brings a real energy to it and so does Ericsson that I, I like it's a professional enthusiasm and quality that I wish would spread throughout the rest of the team if you had players that was all carbon copies of that, we would not be losing games. When Ericsson's not on the pitch, the quality of Manchester United's play falls off a cliff. Number five, striker sorrows. I hope not having a primed and reliable striker that fits our system isn't going to destroy this season for us. Martial's injured. The start of the season, I said, I don't trust him. And... He's given us every reason to, to say that. Ronaldo clearly doesn't want to be here. And even if he does want to be here, he currently does not look like he fits the system 
uh, and isn't going to be a team player, at least in that sense. Marcus, he, he might say he wants to play up front. He might want to play as a nine. I think he needs a bit more in his game. I, I think he's much more effective off the left. I don't know if he sees an opportunity to play there, and maybe that's why he, he says he wants to play there. But for me, he's better as a left forward. This could make a massive difference to United season if we don't have a reliable goal scorer. We might get, we might end up being hard to beat, but you might end up in more games like the Sociedad game where, all right, the VAR bullshit decision aside, we didn't deserve to win it. We didn't deserve to lose it, but you didn't deserve to win it either. And if you end up being hard to beat, ironically, you end up being what Fergie built early doors at United. Boring teams that see loads of nil-nils. Maybe lose the occasional one-nil game. It's fucking boring. And maybe you have to go through the boring stage to get to the, the, the reliable stage before you can then start adding the goals and the final pieces of the jigsaw. But we've been for a long season if we don't start scoring some goals with a quickness. Because we need to score some goals with a quickness. Social and United are probably still going to qualify from this group because I expect both of them to smack up Sheriff and um, Ammonia. But United could have finished top of this group quite comfortably. Sociedad are a capable side, but a beatable side. And they didn't really offer a lot tonight. You know, for as much as United didn't really offer much, they didn't offer a lot either. It was a shit game. It was a shit game in a flat atmosphere. BT kept trying to tie it into the passing of the Queen. Honestly, I'm not sure how many people were going into the stadium with that at the forefront of the mind. Um... Not enough for it to affect the atmosphere in seemingly the way it did, at least, anyway. The the opportunity now has gone to Real Sociedad to top this group. Potentially unbeaten. I still fully expect United to qualify from the group. I expect the task of dealing with Sheriff and Ammonia to be a lot more simple and straightforward than it is dealing with you know, a very capable, good technical side in Sociedad. But we've given ourselves no margin for error now. If we end up losing to one of the other two teams, we're in the shit in a big way. Then you've got to start pulling it out. No margin for error. And I don't know if United are capable of going through that without needing a bit of margin for error. Worst possible start. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.